Welcome to the video series Exploring the Medieval Manuscript Book. In this episode, I talk about the structure of the medieval page. We are used to observing the silent cues of the printed book. We understand that chapters begin on a new page, that paragraphs are usually indented, and that you can mark your place in a book by remembering its page number. Medieval manuscripts used similar but different cues to help the reader navigate their contents. Take this manuscript, for example, copied circa 1400 in France. The text opens with the decorated initial A placed under a small illumination. Here we see a teacher seated to the left in a classroom. He's gesturing, possibly counting on his fingers, while the poster on the classroom's wall, which is decorated with numbers, gives us a further clue. This is a mathematics lesson. The story told within this illumination orientates the reader towards the content of the text, which also concerns mathematics. It's a text on the use of the abacus, a counting device, and was written by the English scholar Adelard of Bath. In fact, the title of the text is written here on the upper margin of the page in blue, gold and red letters. The decorated initials and paragraph markings break down the text of this deluxe manuscript for the reader, subdividing it into passages. The prologue is marked with a large initial, while the beginning of the text proper is marked with a smaller initial. Meanwhile, the body of the text is punctuated by paragraph markings in red, blue and gold. Turning the page, we see that the title of the book is repeated here again across the upper margin. And the scribe also helps the reader to locate certain passages by using keywords and numbers in the margin. In spite of its subject matter, the large size and elaborate decoration of this manuscript suggests that it was never used by a medieval student but was probably commissioned for a member of the nobility. Still, however pretty, it's laid out practically to facilitate the reader. In fact, the handwritten page could be a very flexible space. Take a look at this manuscript, copied in the late 8th or early 9th century. Here a scribe has copied the chronicle of Eusebius Jerome, a summary of history presented in a set of timelines. Here we can see how the scribe has used four different colours of ink to represent four concurrent timelines. They're spread across two pages, with some words presented in triangular shaped passages, partly for decoration, but partly to sync the passages visually. And the scribe even plays with the configuration of the page, depending on the emphasis he wants to give to particular events in history. For example, here, the columns of the text are interrupted by the words Troia capta, a reference to the capture of Troy, a key event in the narrative of this chronicle. The scribe probably copied this layout and colour coding from their source manuscript, but this last example clearly shows how adaptable the manuscript page could be for the structure and expression of text. I hope you'd enjoyed this episode of Exploring the Medieval Manuscript Book. In the next episode, we'll talk about the ways in which manuscripts were designed to facilitate discontinuous reading.